I always consider, like, I always say this is just the beginning, you know, and it really is because I really, I firmly believe that advantage cleaning can go and hit, hit our forecast, which is in the next 10 to 12 years, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to hit like 50 million. Hello and welcome everybody to the Cleaning Business Mentor Podcast. In today's episode, I have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Omar Miller, who is the founder and owner of Advantage Cleaning based out of NYC. He is a family man, an entrepreneur, and in my opinion, I would say at this point, you are an industry expert. <laughs> you have come such a freaking long way in your business, Omar, and I thought that having you on today would be super beneficial for our listeners because you have done this entrepreneurial thing <laughs> for quite some time now. You've even started over which I would love to talk about, um, you know, as we're going through the interview, because I think that's also really important because, you know, as you know, entrepreneurship is never linear. It is forever changing. And yes, thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your busy day to be on the podcast. Carolyn, it's a pleasure to be here. And, um, you know, we obviously have rapport. Uh, we've known each other for quite some time now. And much like you consider me an expert, I would consider you the same thing, right? Um, where this is like thank casual you. conversation. We do this on a normal phone call. Probably <laughs> no, one absolutely. of the two people in the tri-state area who really love talking about cleaning. No, for sure. And just a little bit of uh, context for you guys. So I was actually introduced to Omar at a cleaning and cocktails event. Um, we have some of the same mentors, uh, Ricky Regalado. Um, I know you also work with Dominic. Shout out to Dominic. He's awesome. And yeah, so I was actually at a networking event. That was the first time I saw you. We were in Chicago. And even then, I mean, you were doing amazing things. I actually... I briefly remember you having to actually walk out because you were closing on like a huge freaking deal. <laughs> so that was actually how Omar and I were introduced uh, through the power of networking. And like myself, he is a New York native. You were born and raised in the Bronx. Is that right? Not the or Bronx. I was born, I was born and raised in Manhattan, but I, I pretty much lived in every, every borough, you know? Okay. Um, so you are a New York native. Guess what? Now me and you are neighbors because I'm in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, uh, same. So I'm actually, I'm originally from Jersey and then I came over, uh, now I'm in Staten Island, but eventually the plan is to go, yeah, back to Jersey. But uh, your business is Advantage Cleaning primarily. Actually, you're in both states now. I've seen, where do we yeah. start? I know you're you're definitely in the city big time. And then I've also seen you, um, which by the way, if you guys don't follow Omar, I'm going to put all his info in the description of this video, but you guys have to watch this guy, LinkedIn, Facebook, everything everything just watching your growth has been inspirational in itself um but yeah i do see you you know you are in manhattan in new york and then i've also seen you doing like the, the huge mall right if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. oh, and, and, and in these big areas yeah please first and foremost man you gave you bigged up some really good people in the beginning rick dom those are my guys you know um it's just information right the ability to um tra transfer information the ability to receive it and do the right thing with it uh, goes a long way and i'm i'm a very firm believer on collapsing cycles, right? And that's what mentors do. Um, if you are able to take the information and turn it into something, you can, you know, kind of miss some of the mistakes and some of the mishaps that people make early on when they're starting a company, right? I have a tremendous story behind that. Probably save you a whole year if you want to. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Advantage Cleaning, currently we are in New Jersey, Connecticut, New York, and we're going to Las Vegas and Florida, right? Wow. So yeah, we're spending Congratulations. Right yeah, we just hit the five year mark. So we kind of like, you know, like jumped over the little curse, the business curse. So, you know, I know everyone says if you can make it five years, chances are you'll stay in business. Um, so we literally just got over the hump of five years. We're at, I think at this point, we're floating between like 85 to 100 employees, you know? That's um, amazing. Holy crap. Let me just talk on that for a second because prior to this, um, I was doing my research, of course. I, I know a lot about you from following you and, and knowing each other personally, but I'm like, let me do some research. 11 months ago, Rick had you on the show, Ricky Regalado. And at that time, you had 40 employees. So yeah, we, can you just, so you guys are at how many now? We're, close, we're about 100. You know, we're floating between wow. 86, to be exact, 86 and 100. Um, special that project, is freaking amazing. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. So you've, you've Thank doubled you. your, your employees in under the last 12 months. But go ahead, please yeah. <laughs> continue. It's been, I always tell people, like my first three years of doing this was pretty much systematizing, right? understanding how to create streamlined processes and these last two years have on my side have been more of the business development you know i've been able to go out there and create relationships 
and get us to where I know that we need to go, right? I always consider, like, I always say this is just the beginning, you know, and it really is because I really, I firmly believe that advantage cleaning can go and hit hit our forecast, which is in the next 10 to 12 years, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to hit like 50 million. So that I'm is, a firm that is in such that. an amazing goal. And I, I believe you guys are going to hit that as well. <laughs> I'm just saying that right now. So we're excited. I mean, we have uh, uh, another thing is like, as you know, um, once you start growing, not only do you need systems, but you need the right people in place. Right. So developing my org chart, um, I spent last year doing where we made some um, executive level hires. Right. So and really um, designing a, a, the perfect plan in terms of putting people in play where I was able to step out and actually work on the business and not in it as much um i don't think i'll ever stop working in it completely but you know at the moment for now I, I am on the sales side a lot heavier than i used to be because we have operations we have a coo we have a, um, an account manager you know we have area managers we have supervisors so a lot of the uh, role distribution and the communicational efforts don't go beyond operations and when they do i know i have to step in because it's, it's extremely important and it normally involves a client um and at that point mm -hmm. i don't mind stepping in right um for conflict resolution or whatever it is to put out the fire. But it's it's been tremendous, man. We have a very strong team and I'm not to my own horn, but our retention rate's pretty good because the same people I had five years ago <laughs> is great, right? Um, no, that is I, something to toot your own horn about because it yeah, is, I mean, we know it is so freaking hard to find talent in this, in this industry and not just find the talent, but like you said, be able to retain those employees and have them grow with you. So that cool. is a big deal. And that it's speaks a, a lot on you. That speaks a lot on our culture. Like, you know. Yes. And, and culture goes beyond me. Like I, I'm only as good as my employees, right? And That's I look true. at them sometimes and they are incredible, you know, and I, I watch the way they work. I watch their ethic and their integrity, integrity and their, and their level of product knowledge and the way they want to grow is is really profound, you know, and I we offer that, right? So we have a uh, like an ESG program where, where we committed to and, and we've developed relationships with our supplier and through those relationships, we develop training and education, right? So one of our core values is employee leadership and growth and we've we've been able not only to commit to that but live it because we have a lot of people coming in who you know we all grew up on fabuloso on the floor right and if it smelled right. good it was good <laughs> But yeah, now no, like, that's true. Yeah, now we understand. Hey, look, this is the amount of chemical per the ratio of water, right? Um, and this mm -hmm. is how we do it with floor. This is how we strip and wax. This is how you take care of marble and metal and things of that nature. This is how you properly put on uh, personal protective equipment. You know, how you mitigate emerging pathogens, bloodborne pathogens. You don't just go pick it up, right? So these things are extremely important um, along with the educational processes of building service contractor courses or ISSA, and then which leads people into leadership, supervision, mm -hmm. management so forth and so on, right? Because if I got this many people, I should be working on hiring from within. And that's what the, the process of hiring from within, I feel falls on my back because I have mm -hmm. to give the necessary steps to educate my cleaners to get to that point where they can now move into a new role, right? Including yeah. management and operations, right? When I have a role distribution meeting, I normally tell people, hey, your main priority should be teaching someone else how to do your job so you can get to a new role, right? And that's the I way you need that. to look at it when, you, when you're working, right? How do I go from area manager to operation, right? Well, you got to figure that out. First, you have to have a very strong area manager. And how do you have a very strong area manager? If he could do all the tasks and perform the same outcomes as you, then you're on the right track. I love that. And and I know from my own experience that allowing or letting your employees know that there is that room for growth and working with them is super important. I also have some of the same technicians that have been with us um, somewhat from the beginning. And I've learned through trial and error that you have to invest into your employees, right? And understand what their goals are in life. Life. And like you, you mentioned how to, you know, educate them and give them the resources that they need to not only become a better employee, but become a better person, feel more involved in the company and actually to want to continue to want to grow. And that is so super important for everybody to, you know, to realize and understand sooner than later, because it's if true. you're just hiring people, bodies to put in just to do a cleaning, your doesn't turnover work. is going to be so doesn't high. Work. You're going to be wasting time, money. And no, it doesn't work. Um, it's something that I've seen, you know, from following following you on social media is that you do put a lot of effort and, and, and time into your employees education. I always see you guys doing some new type of training, like you mentioned, whether it's, um, you know, for pathogens or safety, um, you're always staying on top of educating those within the company to bring them up and lift, uplift them. And I think that once we understand that as business owners, it's not just about, okay, what can they do for us, but what can we do for them? That's when we start to see that shift in how well they're performing their Absolutely. overall jobs. It's also about like 
all right, my integrity level and how how capable of I am I of doing my job, right? What is the capacity of the COO, president, and uh, where am I taking my culture and my team? Um, when we enter a facility, when we step foot in that facility, our immediate job is the commitment to that client and making sure that they don't feel any sort of vulnerability, right? That they understand that they made the right choice and why did they mm-hmm. make the right choice, right? Because you have a group of people coming in here who understand A to Z, right? From production rates to the engineering the proper clean systems, to offering the proper educational systems, to aligning ourselves with the client's values, understanding all their needs and necessities as well, right? So plenty of different programs that we do, and we've had a lot of success with clients due to that. And I, I, I feel like it's just pivotal to be on the educational side of things. And it's like, I always want my feet are always running 10 times faster, but sometimes I got to <laughs> pull them back. And you know what? I got to learn this first so I can go in there and do it the right way. And that's what we did the last five years, man. Now we're in facilities, any Anywhere from 30,000 to 300,000 square feet. That is impressive. Like if somebody called me with a place that big, I think I'd have an anxiety attack. <laughs> I'd have to be like, that. Omar, I think I have yeah. somebody for you. But no, yes. I mean, that that's awesome. So you, you guys do a lot of training within the company. What else would you say? I mean, I, I know the answer a little bit as far as like the sales, right? You mentioned being a part of the sales. Um, I know from listening to other interviews that you do have a background in sales, a background in real estate and you mentioned how going door to door and you know selling homes that really sharpened your sales skills overall which then in turn obviously is now and you know improving advantage cleaning so how what um you know i know like with the employees you've doubled almost yeah no you've almost tripled uh, you, you're, you you're more than doubled employees yeah you've more than doubled your employees um but also with that I, i'm assuming that your sales overall sales have also increased yeah, sales, are, sales have increased and um it's exciting you know it's exciting to see like the transition of even even personal growth like through the ability to to function at a higher level and offer more to this company right because the resources are better at this point you know um and that Mm -hmm. comes over time with growth in numbers so now absolutely it recycles itself and goes back in and then creates this bigger company that's healthier and more educated and able to move forward and not only stronger but faster Um, so yeah yeah and to speak and that's awesome and to speak on that um that's something else that i've noticed that you do a lot of you know you, you invest into your personal growth so i always see you you know, at conferences, you know, you're always at the BSCAI get togethers. I think you did like a fortune 500 class or something like that. But all of that, you know, like you mentioned, it does cost money, you do need the resources for that. But if you could just talk on the importance of, you know, investing into your personal growth, and how that, you know, in turn, affects your overall business growth. Like I I go in now, and I'm like, okay, I've done sales in real estate, I was successful at that, right? Residential real estate, and Lower Manhattan, Battery Park, Tribeca, Chelsea. Um, I went door to door, which was a beast. And you got like a 20 second window to convince someone to buy something that you might not even believe, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then within that time, you're just closing deals. And, and I was I was very good at both of those, which helped because it was almost like a boot camp system for entrepreneurship. As you know, my first time around, I failed miserably, right? And then strategized this plan to systematically come back and do things the right way. And like much like I told Rick, right? I, I was left with a car, like a like I was left with a car and I. I had like $60 for gas. I jumped in the car. Um, and based on demographic, that's how I moved and set up my position. So I went to an area, um, Greenwich, Connecticut, which was predominantly, you know, well off, upper class or even better. Mm-hmm. And I knew that there was there weren't really many entertainers up there, but there were executive level people who could make a decision. Guess what? I drove there every morning for the first, I think it was... Four, four or five months and pick people up and they had no choice but they're going to the airport you can't jump out the car right you got to listen to me mm-hmm. so <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would pitch advantage for that amount of time and that was my bridge back to life right I met a, I met a lady named Kristen and and she said come by the office on Monday came by the office um, she introduced me to a, a five day a week contract which was enough to pay bills and enough to pay some rent it wasn't like you know glamorous but it, it was going to get things done for the time being right parked the car picked up the mop bucket window pole whatever we had to do and started cleaning right and I literally literally went B to B through every single building in Manhattan like relentlessly like I, I did some things I wouldn't recommend people doing I, <laughs> no I know I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I was just, almost getting geez. kicked out of places but you did what All you had to do to get in front of those people story right there was one building it's a famous building in new york so i'm not going to say the name but (laughs) 
me, there was two different staircases like winding like this. And I knew that every floor I went, security was going to come out on this floor. So I started going down the other staircase and going down. So we kept bumping into each other to the point where he said, come on, man. And I was just like, you know what? I'll leave the building. But <laughs> that, uh, that was my pursuit and the relentless approach to building this company, right? Which we have till this day. That's our mindset. You know, um, it's just, we got to get You have done. to be relentless. Yeah, no, you yeah. have to. And I love that because, you know, for anyone that's listening or watching, he didn't take no for an answer. And the first time around, I know you said you failed miserably. Um, and that may, you know, maybe how you see it. But in my opinion, I feel like you didn't fail miserably. Maybe the business didn't do what you wanted it to, but you went through that and you learned more. So when you started that up that second time, you were learning, you were starting from experience, right? So you knew everything now that you shouldn't do <laughs> or yeah, what yeah. or what to avoid, right? Yeah. So I think that's really important because a lot of people, they go into business and they just think, okay, it's going to work this first time. And, and it's not always the case. So if you do come to a point where things don't work out, that doesn't mean just leave it there and, and just give up, right? No, that means, okay, now I know what I shouldn't do. And now I know every, how to start fresh. Know, every time someone tells you no, you are one step closer to hearing a yes. And that's how you have to look at it. I mean, we are, as entrepreneurs, we know how tough this can get and how beautiful it can get. The journey is amazing, right? But you got to enjoy it. And I think that's where the beauty is that lies behind everything is the process. If you could see your process, enjoy your process and say, you know what, like much like you, Carolyn, you, you love this industry. Like we can go off this podcast and still continue talking about cleaning for oh, this yeah. hour, you know, and not too for many sure. people enjoy those conversations, right? It's, <laughs> <laughs> no. you know, you get away from it. But it is it is what it is. You know, like this is we're invested in it. We really love what we do. It's one of the largest industries in the world, right? There's so many adjacent um industries to it that you could attach to. Um and I feel like it's a gateway. I always tell people, man, some people, whatever you want to do, you know, service industry can be a gateway and a platform to get you where you need to go. Like even if this is not it. Yes. Right? Yes, and I love that. I love that. That is so true because it is a gateway. It's getting into the cleaning industry. We always think like we, most of us do it out of necessity, right? We have to pay the bills. That's really a, most of the reason why we get into it. But then you start to learn, educate yourself on things. And you're like, wait a minute, there's this type of cleaning. Well, there's this. Well, now I can do floors. And then it's like, it just opens up a whole new world. So many things, cleaning products, different types of cleans. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, we can go on and on and on. Like I, I recently went to the to the BSCAI thing and event and I met people who were in the industry, but doing other things. And I'm just like, my mind was blown. I'm like, oh, my God, there are so many opportunities. There's so many ways to pivot. man. I mean, I've seen people go in the, the um, serve pro direction, right, where you're just mitigating, you know, large areas and you're just cleaning up water damage and fire and, and all that stuff. But there is there is a sub level to everything. You know, mm -hmm. um, I enjoy the commercial aspect. Right. Um, I understand understand based on data analysis where our company needs to go and that's what we're attaching ourselves to um, moving forward you know like in the next 10 years pivoting in that direction but yeah it's there's so many different things you can do because let's face it once you're in the door your clients always ask you hey do you know someone who can do this do you know someone who can do that and then it's just the temptation of a natural entrepreneur to say you know what let me create this and let me create that so when they ask next time say yeah I can do it for you you know and that's and that's one of the things we've done and one of the processes I've, I've learned from a lot of our mentors as well right like Rick and Dom and, and what they're doing full and, service yeah they're kicking down doors man they, let's just say they're kicking <laughs> it down and i love them for that you know because a lot of those doors people don't understand how hard it is to open up some of those doors right you have you have platforms like boma and issa and things like that where you know they've had people on their board and things like that for years you know, and, and, and opportunities will arise through people like Rick and people like, like Rosalado and people who are there like, oh, you know, and then they're really doing a lot of things for us. That, oh, yeah, that for we're sure. Not even conscious of at the moment, but it, there's a lot going on. I mean, me and you are, but yeah. a lot of people know them you know don't understand what they're doing right now it's exciting it's definitely exciting to see the things that they're doing and you know seeing things like that you're doing and just being so inspirational for the smaller you know whether they're hispanic or any type of immigrant business really because predominantly we know that this is more so caucasian <laughs> 
it's like for business. You know, we're normally the ones that are doing the cleaning, not so much the ones having the large cleaning businesses. And now we're kind of seeing that shift. And that's, you know, being made available because of the information that we're all sharing with one another and, and yeah, and learning. So it's really exciting. So we talked about your personal growth, which you've obviously, you know, invest to all the time and you're growing with your company. We talked about how your employees and, you know, bringing them up into the company and hiring within is super important and has helped with the growth of your business. I wanted to talk a little bit because you mentioned that you are into the sales aspect of the business. And, you know, I've heard the term over and over, and I, and I do believe this, that nobody can sell your business like you can, right? No one. And no one. But you can you train no. someone. You can, yeah, I you can do, train them. You can train somebody, <laughs> but, the, but the level of grit and I guess the, um, the belief behind it falls within that person, right? Because when you, whatever your unique selling proposition is, right? When you enter a space, you sell yourself, no one's going to know that better than you, right? You have the DNA behind how you created this whole process and watched it, watched a vision uh, form into reality, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I firmly believe that. However, I do have a strong sales team. And the, the second most important thing behind that, I believe in all aspects, behind operations, behind sales is culture. It, it, for it's sure. For me, because if people believe in you and believe where you're going, they're going to work just as hard as you. Anyone can pick up and go get another job somewhere else, you know, for maybe the same amount of money, maybe a little less, maybe the conveniency of staying home two days, right? But who's going to stand firm and say, you know what, I, I see the vision, let's go, you know, and that's the, that's what we look for in every aspect, every department. For sure. That is super important. Um, Something that I had gotten from one of your interviews was that you were targeting, and, and like you had mentioned, when you were doing those rides from Connecticut, you put yourself in front of your ideal client or you knew or came up with who your ideal client was. You had said something along the lines of, I knew who the clients were that were going to take us to the next level. So mm -hmm. if you could just like, just touch on that topic, because I think, um, including myself, like when we first get into the commercial space, we kind of just, you know, in the beginning, we take any account, right? We'll, we'll take the barbershop, we'll take mm -hmm. the, the blood bank, we'll take the bank, we'll take all these different things to fill our schedule. And granted, in the very beginning, beginning, you know, we all do that because we want to gain the experience. We want to learn the processes. We want to get our hands dirty. But how important is it really for cleaning business owners, whether that's in the commercial space or the residential space or any service industry, really, to understand who that ideal client is? I think it's extremely important, right? Because in order for you to create any sort of unique selling proposition, you got to understand who your client is, right? And you have to have a, a forecast. You have to have a plan, you know, to, to hit those numbers. And you're, you're hitting it on the nose, Carolyn, like in the beginning, we took everything, right? I, don't, I think I was doing everything. What, right, you want right. to clean the sidewalk? <laughs> Let me know. I'll exactly. come in and clean the sidewalk. And then, um, you know, I was doing all that all those sort of things until I realized that um, at a certain point when I was doing everything and we started growing, I could no longer maintain the level of relationship I wanted to with the smaller companies. And that didn't sit well with me because my core values were my core values, right? And I wanted to align myself to as a universal kind of like um, let it go across the board. So eventually we realized who we wanted to take on, right? And that goes based on stats as well. For for example, if, if you know if you're, you're going after 150 people in an office, you know you're looking at anywhere between 45 to 50,000 square feet, right? You know, the production rates per employee, you know how you're going to base that on price. And if that fits into your criteria, how many of those do you need to get you where you want to go? And that's how we break things down. We break it all the way down and we hit metrics, right? And if, if we don't hit the metric on a 30 day basis, then that carries over to the next one. Because if not, we're not necessarily going to hit our goals, you know, and that's priority when it comes to sales, you know, business development, interacting, participating in everything from events, from industry events, to outside of industry events, right? To picking yeah. up the phone and letting people know what you're doing, you know, to being aggressive on social media marketing, which I know you are good at. So thank you, thank you. It like we, we all know there's no like one right way to do right. that. It's Absolutely. like, a, it's like an array of an, an assortment of things that you do consistently and they all kind of like form together and participate in your growth. For sure, for sure. I mean, I have been, like I said, super excited for you. Just watching you online has been insane. Also, thank you so much for hooking me up with some of your clientele. It's <laughs> been awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you get all residential calls. They go straight to you. I, I appreciate it so much. Like you literally, cause we were, we were heavy in Manhattan during COVID and prior to COVID. And you definitely, you gave me that push 
push, that nudge, because I've been saying, you know, what? I'm going to get back into the city. I'm going to get back into Staten Island. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I have it. And then you, st- you know, been presenting me with these opportunities. And I'm like, you know what, this lit the fire under my ass that I needed. So I really do appreciate <laughs> you yeah. giving That's me that right. motivation Anytime, and that opportunity. We have the same mindset. So I know when I'm passing a client, I know they're in good hands. You know, and, and I appreciate that residential real estate. So I get people calling me all the time. You know, can you clean this? I tried it, didn't work out. You know, my friends wanted me to to basically go scale the window and clean the. You know, I was just like, nah, this is not working, man. Uh, <laughs> You're like, I think I'll stick to buildings <laughs> for sure. But, but there are very successful residential companies, right? And I, my hat goes off to you guys, man. It's, it's not the easiest job. It takes a lot of organizational skills to do that. For um, sure, for sure. Yeah, I would say yeah. commercial is definitely more sustainable. Um, but if you, if you know, if you could figure out the residential you know for some reason i just can't get away from it so i'm embracing it at this point <laughs> and um yeah it's definitely um it's definitely a little different so what are or i know you talk a lot about forecasting which i love you talk a lot about planning hitting numbers and i think that's something that you know the smaller businesses and even businesses like such as myself we definitely need to focus more on as well as having those ideal clients and understanding uh, a breakdown of what our goals are right um and you talk a lot about goals so where do you see advantage? I know you gave us, uh, I think it was the five or the 10 year mark, but where do you see advantage 12 months from now? Because uh, a year a from now, point. you were you yeah. you were at 40, you're at 80 plus employees now. As I mentioned, you guys got to follow Omar, but he is cleaning some of these event spaces and malls that I am just like, I would be so freaked out having to clean. Like, how do you even do that? And I know that's from years of learning and, and all that, but yeah, where do you guys see yourself? 12 12 months from now because you're you're very hard to keep up with like you're just you're doing it (laughs) and i i I can honestly say like in the next year i I firmly believe that we can 10x in terms of where our numbers are now um which which means we'll probably double revenue we will probably gain 50 percent traction on employment so we might be at a hunt between 130 150 employees at that point firm believer in that we are definitely going to go through new jersey and start building in that state um and go south right so pennsylvania dc Maryland, um, all those states as well. So we're we're already on track to be a net. We're a national company if you look at it, right? Yes, no, absolutely. My standard, not where I'd like to be at this point, but we're getting there. You know, did we jump all the way over to the West Coast first? Yeah, we did. You know, but. Um, <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna make our money through each state, and we're gonna continue to grow this brand as a national company. And um, in the next year, I could definitely see us not only changing some lives on a personal level, like on the executive level, but also doubling our numbers in, in size. You know, and that's beautiful. offering more opportunity to people. Yeah, it's a it's a great experience, man. Because now, like I said, that first three years was more or less systematizing, and now I could actually see like I would normally say, yeah, go ten x. No, but this time I know, like I'm actually. Clear. <laughs> You're like, I'm firm on that. Yeah. I feel it. <laughs> the pipeline. Like I know what's in that pipeline already. The pipeline just has to move move forward a little bit. And once it starts dripping down, yeah. I mean, we you know, it could be two, three, or four clients that take us there, you know, but we're definitely gonna hit those numbers. That is exciting. I'm so proud of all the work that you do. It's really, really inspirational. Can you tell everybody where and how they can connect with you? Absolutely. You can connect with me on Instagram. We are advantage underscore cleaning underscore serve. Sorry, I almost forgot. Advantage no, no, you're fine. I'm going to link cleaning. all of this down below. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Advantage underscore cleaning underscore serve. And I'm also on Facebook, Advantage Cleaning LLC, LinkedIn, Omar Miller. Um, we also have a company profile, which is Advantage Cleaning LLC. Um, so you can hit me on most major platforms. I'm happy to help if you have any questions, just like people help me out. You know, I usually leave my door open. If I can assist, I will. Awesome. Awesome. And then one last question for you. So I know you are, you guys are branching out to different states. Are you working with partners or are you sticking with, are you doing like the subcontracting? Are you guys going to keep it we W2 are, employees? That's, mix? A, that's a very good question. So we, so we, we minimally subcontract, right? Okay. Um, and then what we're looking to do is be more aggressive with employing people in different states. Oh, know, beautiful. So That's awesome. We have a few subcontracting situations um, that we work with with people who we know, you know. Of and course. And then um, currently, but other states, we're trying to like set up a firm, like Advantage Import, you know. That is exciting. I really can't wait to have you back on and just see, you know, where you guys are at in a year because I'll tell you, you are hard to keep up with. <laughs> 
I love it. And then the fact that you still have, you have a really good work-life balance as well, from what I see, right? You, I always see you taking your son, he's playing basketball, playing. I'm like, wow, I'm like, I need to spend some time with my kids. <laughs> yeah, he's a, uh, that's, but the, he's, he's awesome, man. And, you know, I, I have three kids, so, but he's the youngest and I, I played a little ball, you know, I enjoy the sport and um, watching, I coach more than his coaches. You know, sometimes I'm screaming, I got to get off the court mm-hmm. and like, check myself because I'm like, <laughs> as well fill an application and start working you know but yeah i, I enjoy it man and i love taking him there because it's, it's like brings back memories and he really enjoys the sport um he's pretty good that's you awesome know, really good. Yeah. that is awesome well again i just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your day and coming on to the podcast um i appreciate it i know the viewers and the listeners are going to find a ton of gems from listening on how you have taken advantage cleaning as far as you have in the short amount of time and excited for the future man really excited to see where you take this because i know for a fact that if you know you're going to 10x it you're going to 10x it yeah yeah 100 percent. and i'm excited I'm, I'm glad that you know my industry peers are people like you and the other people that we know because we, it's some really cool awesome people man just willing to help at the drop of a dime you know and that means a lot you know new circles mm-hmm. And it's, it, it's really incredible, you know. So I appreciate it. Is. It's it's beautiful. No, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate the community. Waiting for you every time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I appreciate it too. And you guys, it's so important to network and get out there um, because these are the types of connections that are made. And I'll tell you something like in my adult life, I have not really had like quality friends or, you know, even family members at some point that are supportive in the things that I do. And now I can honestly say that I have such a supportive group of entrepreneurs such as yourself, you know, people that I strive to be like such as yourself um, that are there to answer questions and give a helping hand and we're out here like we're here you just have to put yourself out there right like go to these events slide into somebody's dm or you know youtube comments because you never know people are willing to give you that information but you know first part of that is putting yourself out there and asking for help because if you don't ask for help you're not gonna you're definitely not gonna get it the older saying is still the same right a closed mouth does not get fed um and you are one no away from a yes you know so i would tell anyone out there who's like kind of struggling which we we still struggle at certain levels anyway you know just keep believing in yourself you know keep believing in yourself and keep going you know because the the more you believe the more you learn the more that energy is gonna you know go off into into other communities and other settings settings and uh, before you know it you'll be like wow when did this happen exactly and persistency is key omar did not give up <laughs> no, 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 no. i do not give up <laughs> No matter no, no. how much I still want to no. quit life and business, yeah. like you got to keep pushing. There have been so many times that I know that we've all wanted to quit and we've all gotten this close and it's just so important to just keep going, keep going, keep going because I mean, it's proven, right? Like you just have to keep pushing in order to get to where you want to go. If you don't do it, you're, the answer is definitely no. You know what's going to happen if you don't do it. I feel like it's better to, you know, to fall wherever you, the cards land for you rather than to sit back and wonder what if. Because the what if is the is the one that that's antagonized. So mm-hmm. if you just give a hundred percent effort to whatever you're doing, right? And that shows your character, that shows your integrity. It also resonates into whatever you're gonna be doing down the line. You know, and that's that's what we stand on, you know, that that similar foundation. And no, we don't take no for an answer. So you might not even sign the contract, we'll just <laughs> open a boom and auto cover. <laughs> We're showing up. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Omar. Um, This has been so great. And again, I can't wait to see where you're at um, this time next year because you guys are freaking killing it. Everybody, make sure to give Omar a follow. I'm going to be putting all his social links down below. And thank you again for joining me on today's podcast. Anytime.